Hi guys, how are y'all doing? I'm Helen from The Crafty So and So and today we're going to be making pyjama bottoms. So the difference with these ones today are that they are shorts. Um, I'm going to be teaching you how to do it using your very own pyjama bottoms from scratch. So before you even think about cutting into any fabric, first you need to create your pattern. If you've already got a pattern or you've got one from online, that's fine use that but this is purposely from your own pajama bottoms so these are ones that i love to wear so i just want to make these but in shorts form but don't want to sacrifice those so you want to get your pajama bottoms a pencil your pins and some graph paper so this is stuff you can buy from a like hobby craft in a pack and it just means it's big sheets of paper that you can create your pattern on so to get started you want to pin your seams together so you'll see on mine there's a seam edge there and a seam edge there they are pinned together because you don't want any excess from the back which causes the seat here you don't want that coming forward because this is the front and then you will do the back so you want to start by pinning your legs together I haven't done it all the way down because my cut off point is going to be like here so just want to keep that in mind so once you've created your front pattern here you want then want to do the same for the back so take your pins out fold over make sure that you if you've got one pajama bottoms that crinkle quite a lot give them a good press first i've just tried to iron these but they're not very good um, and do the same for the back so i've pinned down this side and then down this side and then that's when you can transfer it to your paper to create your back piece so I've got now my back piece and my front piece. I think maybe the back piece is just a little bit longer. But you can always amend that once you get sewing. Let's get to it. So just one thing I forgot to remember. If your bottoms have already got elastic in and they are pulled to the size that you wear them at. Uh, remember to loosen them just a little. Just so while you draft your pattern. Um, I did this. I pulled them out a little but I'm still going to add on. An extra panel, I think, maybe in the sides as a decoration, just to give it a little bit more room. So then when you put your elastic in for the waist, or put your cotton tape in to pull, then you've got some room to pull it in. So as usual, I'll talk you through my equipment. So I've got my pins at the back, I've got my chalk pen, I've got my elastic here if I want to do an elastic waist. I've got some lace here for a decorative trim. I've got my cotton tape if I want to use that instead of the elastic as a pull in and then I've got my fabric scissors and my fabric so to start you want to lay your fabric out doubled over so it's got two layers you want to lay that out nice and flat I've tried to keep because mine's a pattern I've tried to keep match with this pink line here along and then when I've placed on my pattern piece I've tried to match with the blue I'm not a going to try and pattern match these just because I think the more disarray they look the more funky they'll look if you've got a pattern fabric and want to pattern match it's not something I have mastered the skill of yet <laughs> unfortunately so start by pinning it on your fabric I've left mine quite far apart because I want to add extra an extra inch all the way around to give it a little bit more room you can add a more if you wish if you're making these for somebody who's bigger or smaller you can then amend by taking off or in I always use a good inch seam allowance on these on the garments because any alterations then you've got at least two inches extra room if you need to take it out um, it's just a good way to go with it it's always worked for me so it's a safe bet the next thing you want to do is mark out your seam allowance all around the edges right there and down mark out your seam allowance and then you're ready to cut out so you want to take your know, the next step is to take both pattern pieces so that's the back that's the front and you want to pin them together so pin them right sides together so this is the wrong side and you only want to pin and sew this curved seam 
this curved seam is your seat that is the bit that curves around your bottom and the same for the front so you once you've pinned them together sew them with a one inch seam allowance because then you've got enough room to take out or even take in if you need to um, once you try them on so if you're anything like me and you get confused between your front your front pieces and your back pieces put a pin or a mark or something on your back so this is my center back and I've put a pin just so then I know that that's the back because it's easily even though you'd think there is quite the difference sometimes once you get sewing it all looks the same so the next point is that you want to now join your front to your back so you want to lay them together on top of each other right sides together as always and you want to match up your side seam so you want to be matching up this seam and these seams so that to that one and then that to that one and then that'll create the shorts so as you can see here I've pressed my seam open on that curved line on the front and the back and then matched the very point at the base so this is the inside leg and here and then here is the outside of the leg and that side so then that is the crotch there sew those together and then you can try them out so now the test I've got the shorts on let's see how much we need to take them in or what to do with them see if they look nice yeah. so they're a bit long so I just need to alter the hem they're a bit big on the waist but that will be gathered in when I put elastic in and my waistband on but otherwise they look good the next step is to cut a length of fabric around three inches wide and as long to fit round the top and the waist of your shorts so I've cut mine and then you want to just to give it a bit of, of a stability I've ironed on my interfacing just to give it a bit of stability uh, mine's a lightweight you want to iron it onto the wrong side of your fabric cut a second strip so you'll have two strips one with interfacing and one without these are going to create a nice thick band you can make these as thick as you like or as thin as you like so generally your band is going to be around two inches thick when finished you can make it smaller if you like but this is just what I fancy so your band together so sew your two strips together right sides together only on one side do this with a quarter inch seam make sure you're only doing it on one side once you've done that take it to the ironing board and press your seam open so once you've pressed your seam open on your band press down so it's now one band see like that so then you want to fold this in half and find your center point because your center point is then going to be the center point on your bottoms and this is where you if you're using cotton tape you want to make two little button holes for it to thread through so let's go do that now so I have sewn my raw edges together just down here to create a continuous band this will then sit on to your shorts so you want to lay your shorts out right sides together again so you're taking the boot that's got the on the take the side that's got the interface in to put onto the front so start by laying it on pin it all the way around and then you want to sew that into place once you've done that, press the seam open and then you can fold over and do the other side. So once you've sewn on your waistband, you see the seam here. 
And to fold that over, you just want to go and press this seam along here. So once you've pressed that, you then want to take your inside and fold over like so and so a nice neat edge there and that should just catch just on this point here you can hand sew it down if you don't want to use a sewing machine which I might do just to save me from catching anything on the front and then the last thing you need to do is hem your bottom so while you're pressing up your seam this is the one that you've just sewn press it up into the waistband because then once you fold this over it hides the seam so it makes it a little bit nicer inside and then it stops any of this from catching anything and fraying so the last thing to do is hem your bottoms so I'm making mine even so that one was just a little bit longer than the other and then I'm going to turn them up again to create quite a nice little um, fat cuff on the bottom so I am doing that now so iron that up and pin into place and then you can do a running stitch along the edge to hold it in place thank you for watching and if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe for more tutorials and we'll see you again soon bye